Alrighty, folks, I had a request from George to give you guys a video of what's going to be up and coming soon. So I'm going to do that right now, as well as talk a little bit about some of our guys and the process that we go through here at Coon Truck and RV. So this is the actually the first and the last um, station for our RVs when they go through our process. They come in here when we first buy them, they get pressure washed. Uh, everything gets degreased and stuff like that. So if the guys have to caulk the roofs or anything, everything is nice and clean. Uh, as you can see, we have a man lift over there so he can get up there and pressure wash the roofs as well as the rest of the body. It makes it easier for the guys if there's anything they have to reseal or caulk and or helps find any leaks uh, when he's pressure washing the, the, the units. Um, so they start out here getting pressure washed and then they're gonna go through the other bays, which I'll kind of walk through the shop here as we go through. But then the last um, step of the process comes back here. Uh, Jerry, the same guy who does the pressure washing also does our exterior detailing. So the majority of our units, uh, depending on the construction, which most of our pleasure ways, born freeze, Chinooks, uh, road treks, are all the heavier fiberglass. Um, so they get a full buff and wax. Uh, so that's the last step of the process before they go to the shop and they get pictured and videoed. So this one, I think he has finished buffing yesterday. Uh, I hope to get this thing advertised on uh, Monday or Tuesday. Today is a Saturday morning. I came in a little bit early so I could shoot this video before we get busy. Uh, this is a 2005 Winnebago Rialta. Again, this should be ready in a couple of days. Uh, Jerry has been with us for, um, I'm not going to do the math in my head, but Jerry started working for us in 2008. Uh, so he's been here for, what is that, about 13 years. We have a lot of good loyal guys around here. Uh, so first and last step of the process happens in this bay here. I forgot to mention, if Jerry um, grabs me and we notice anything needs paint work, uh, after he's done pressure washing, uh, they will get marked for paint and then they get sent out to a body shop. We don't do any touch-up paint here. Uh, we do send that out to a guy who's been doing it for quite a few years for us. His name is Steve. Uh, we nicknamed him Stevie G because his name's, I'm not going to say his last name on camera, I guess, but we nicknamed him Stevie G. Uh, this bay here has been the uh, hardest for me to find a consistent person to work here. Uh, this is where our mechanic works. As you can see, we have a four post columns. These things lift up from the tire so the guys can get free reign to the entire uh, underside of the RV. If there's any plumbing, uh, gas lines, anything like that that needs fixed underneath, as well as it gives the mechanic a nice free reign underneath of the RV. Uh, I am excited to announce that I think that I may have finally found my guy that's going to stick around for a while. Uh, his name's Matt. He has been in the um, mechanic world for uh, quite a few years. I think he's right around 60. Um, so he's got a lot of experience. I've known him for a long time. My dad's known him most of his life. Uh, he will be starting here, I think, April 19th. Uh, so I'm excited that I may have finally found somebody that fill this bay consistently. I've had some turnover in this bay, uh, which does not I do not like. Uh, I like consistency. I like guys that I can trust, and they're honest, and they're going to stick around. So luckily, hopefully, we get this bay finally filled for good. So to kind of reiterate here, pressure wash is step one. Uh, step two would be if they need to go to touch up for paint. Uh, step three would then be the mechanic. Step four would be Greg and Mike, who are my RV techs that work here and here. Uh, then step five would be uh, back to Richard, who does the interior detailing. And then the last step back to Jerry to do the exterior detailing. Uh, this is one that Greg is currently working on right now. This is a 2003 Chinook Cascade. Um, I like to say that we are different in other th than other dealerships in the essence that we don't just uh, bring these things in and turn the fridge on and um, wipe the counters off and start the generator. Make sure that those things just are functioning to some extent. Uh, my guys have been at this for a while. Uh, we've got a pretty thorough process that they go through as well as checking and making sure all that stuff works. They also go through and they check the drawer slides, the door catches. Um, we have a pretty thorough process, a pretty long list of things that they go through. Um, if you want to consider it a reconditioning or refurbishment of, in some essence in some of these units, uh, this one has been in here for a while. Um, somebody had put click together plank vinyl flooring in these, in this. Um, that's kind of a no-no in RVs. I know it's the simple, easy way to do it, uh, but the temperature changes in an RV, um, they cannot handle that. Those seams and those joints are going to, they're going to, uh, come apart. They're going to buckle. Um, they just, it doesn't work in these. There's too much movement, too many temperature climate changes. Um, so we took all of that out and decided to put vinyl from basically the front to the rear, which if you follow our channel, a lot of these Chinooks, we do that. Um, we typically don't choose the short route to do that. 
Um, we like to do it the right way. So in order to do it the right way, in our opinion, everybody has their different opinions. Um, he actually, Greg pulled the entire dinette out. He pulled the couch and everything underneath that out. He pulled this part of the kitchen out and he also pulled this part of the kitchen cabinets out. So that way we could get the vinyl tucked underneath everything um, as best of our ability. The fridge and this uh, bathroom and stuff back here. Sorry, it's kind of dark in here. Um, this area here, that would be very, very extensive to pull that out. The kitchen and the, the living space, it, it takes time. It's monotonous, but it's, it's, in our opinion, the right way to do that. So we can get that vinyl underneath all that stuff so we don't just have a bunch of seams uh, running around where the, the vinyl is going to lift up and peel up. So it takes a lot of time to do that. Uh, Greg is my brother-in-law. He's been with us for, I think it's around five years now. Uh, Greg is a master at working on these Chinooks. I've had him do a bunch of these. And he has gotten to know these things inside and out. Uh, over here we have Michael. Michael is a uh, master fabricator who, before he came to us. Uh, he's learned a lot in the RV world. His uh, fabrication skills transferred over nicely to the RV world. If there's panels that he has to rebuild, um, he does our welding for us. Um, Mike's a very good guy. Um, he does a lot of work for us. Has worked out very well. This is a 1994 Airstream B190 uh, that he is currently working on. Um, so the Rialto you're going to see next. Um, then after that, you're going to see this uh, 2005 Road Trek 210. Richard is currently... Uh, I'm working on the inside of this unit. He's cleaning up the interior. Still got a clamp on the glass back here. These road truck side windows are known to, um, the, the hinge that clamps to the glass, or glues to the glass is often known to fall off. Uh, we always try to make sure we check those. That one needed re-glued. This is a 2005 Road Trek 210 popular. A uh, very popular unit, if you wanna, if you think that's funny or not. It's, it's just a popular floor plan, but it's also very popular. This one has the nice style wet bath. It also has the North Slough sleeping conf configuration. And then it is also on the Chevy chassis. Uh, so very hard to find unit for that layout, everything about that. Um, that will be the number two after the Rialta. Um, this one here should be the next one that Richard will clean. I think he'll start inside on this one Monday. Um, this is a 2011 Pleasure Way Excel TS. Uh, mm -hmm. These are probably one of our best sellers. These things never stick around very long at all. Um, Everybody loves the layout, they love the bathroom. Uh, so that's a 2011, so you're gonna see the Rialta, you're gonna see this road trek, and then hopefully um, also next week we'll get this pleasure way out there and advertised. Uh, Richard has been working for, actually started working with my dad, I think back when dad originally started, a few years later maybe, dad started in 76, and I think Richard started working for dad maybe in the early 80s. So Richard has been working for us for a very long time. Richard is a magician with interiors. Um, he's not the fastest guy. He is, I think, around 60 years old, but I don't know that there's anybody else I could find that could get an interior cleaner than what he now does. Now that we've gone through the inside of the shop, this is our back lot where everything that else is, uh, that we currently own, uh, sits until we get an opportunity to get it into our shop. So as you can see, we always have lots and lots of motorhomes, uh, sitting out here. It just takes a lot of time to do our process. The average unit probably spends a week to just over a week at our shop between um, all, all I think six of those steps of that process that I gave you um, so it takes a long time to get these things ready um, but we always have new inventory out here we always have things coming if you want to stop out and check out some of this stuff if you're nearby uh, you're welcome to just grab one of us we'll, we'll kind of guide you through what's out here uh, this is actually a conversion van this won't be for sale for a while um, I have a family vacation as well as a couple weddings uh, this year so I actually bought that for me to use for this summer so that I can go on our family trip. And then um, I, my brother-in-law's getting married and my uh, wife's cousin is getting married and my wife is the maid of honor in that wedding. Uh, this here is a Pleasure Way Pursuit. I think it's, a, it's either a 2013 or 2014. Uh, this one has gone through inspection already. I love Pleasure Ways, but Pleasure Way, I hate to tell you that you use crap vinyl on these Pleasure Way Pursuits. The majority of these that I get, the stripes just look gnarly. This unit's not that old to have those stripes looking like that. Uh, what we like to do, uh, instead of getting vinyl put on these, I actually take it to my body guy who does my paint work. He tapes off those stripes, he then removes the vinyl, and then repaints the stripes on with uh, automotive paint, and um, which is gonna get you much longer lifespan out of those stripes. They're not gonna peel and crack and flake like the cheap vinyl that Pleasure Way uses. Unfortunately, 
I don't know why. Pleasure Way is a high quality manufacturer. They make nice stuff. Come on, Pleasure Way, use a little bit better vinyl if they make it. I'm not a vinyl expert. Maybe they don't make a better vinyl, but their stripes just are not very good on those units. I often have to repaint those Pleasure Way pursuits with the repaint the stripes. I don't have to repaint the body, just the stripes. Uh, 2005 Chinook Concourse. Uh, low miles. Bought this one out of Texas. Has 33,000 miles on it. 2004 Chinook Concourse. Uh, I believe this one has around 60,000 miles on it. Um, also bought that one in Texas. 1998 Chinook Concourse. Uh, this one has 105 maybe. Uh, bought that one in Ohio. This one here, uh, missing a wheel cover. That's obviously all stuff that we take care of. Uh, Explorer 230 XL. I think this might be an XLT. Ones I've had in the past are XLWs. Uh, XLT on that one. This one here is a 2006 Road Track 210 Versatile. Dad bought that one down south. As you can see, the yellow, the yellow X's are what we are going to paint. Uh, the bumper has some scratches and a little crack down bottom, which is pretty common on those lower fairings on the Road Tracks when we get them. Uh, that one sold. That one sold. Uh, down here we have a 2003. Uh, Chinook Glacier, that one will be a while. Um, that's one that we're going to re entirely refloor. Um, so that'll be a while until I get that ready. A couple more down there are sold. This one here is a 2006 uh, Gulfstream BT Cruiser. Got to th this traded in last week. Had a customer that I thought that this would work very well for. Uh, I called her. She lives in California. She's currently moving to Texas. Uh, that's a shout out to you, Robin. I do believe Robin's going to buy this unit when we get done with it. I already took some pictures and sent those to her. Uh, she had some custom requests of things that we do. Robin, I'll try to get that done for you as soon as I can if you're watching this. Uh, 1997 Road Trek 170 Popular. That is a one owner unit that I bought uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, that one shouldn't take a whole lot, uh, but it's down the list a little ways on as far as priority of getting done. So that one could be a little while. Uh, if you watch the sneak peek, uh, this is the one that I brought back from uh, Texas, 2001 Explorer 230 XLW. A um, couple things that we're waiting on on that. Hope to get that out sooner than later, but it could be a little while we're waiting on some parts. Parts and supply chain have been very difficult here uh, the past year or two, with or year, year and a half with COVID. Uh, 1997 Airstream B190. I do intend for that to go into Michael after he gets done with the current Airstream that he's on, since he'll be super familiar with everything in the Airstream B190 after he gets done with that one. Uh, 2003 Dodge Road Trek 190 Popular. That is on a Dodge chassis. Um, that one will be uh, hopefully in the next 30 days. Hopefully I'll maybe get that out there. Um, 2004 Coachman Concord. That one needs uh, carpeting and kind of um, redone inside. Just dirty carpet stain so we need to redo the carpet in that one that one's gonna be a little bit but as you can see we have lots of units that will be coming soon if you want to stop out here and check out something uh what we kind of do is if you pick out one um and you want to have first shot at it we're going to take a small deposit from you that's going to get you first on the list for that unit if you so choose to do so no pressure um just if you want to have first shot or shot we're going to try to get a small deposit out of you once we get it done through the shop and ready uh we will call you get you out here before we advertise it let you look at it, see if it works for you, makes you happy in what you want. So if you want to stop out, if you want any more information on any of these, I will try to get you as much as I can. I don't typically have a whole lot of info other than the year and the miles um, until they go through the shop. I also typically don't try to price my stuff until I get them through the shop, so I don't know where I've got to spend or where I'm at on my money. Um, but if you do come out and like something, we will figure out a price for you. Uh, so that way you know where it's going to be before you give us a deposit. Again, as always, if you have any questions, give us a call at Coon Truck and RV, the best little RV dealer around since 1976. All right, I entirely forgot to mention the units that I don't even have here at our location. Right now at Stevie G's, which is our paint guy, um, I have a uh, 1998 or 99 Explorer um, 230 van. That is uh, pending or spoken for by Bill. Uh, Bill came and looked at it before we sent it up to Stevie G's to see if it was something he would like. Uh, he did choose to put a deposit on that, so that will be um, Bill's unit, unless for some reason he doesn't like something when we get done with it. I also have a 2002 or 2003 Road Trek 190 at Stevie G's. Um, I've been uh, talking to a customer named John. Uh, I do believe that that will be a good unit for John, so if you're watching this, this is still at the, at the body shop getting touched up. 
Uh, once it gets back here, I hope to get it in the shop pretty quickly and get it ready. Uh, I'm going to give you a first shot at that since we've been talking for quite some time now. Um, my brother Luke also flew to D.C. Um, Thursday, a couple days ago. Uh, we had a camper van, a 2011 Pleasure Way Lexor TS to pick up down there. Uh, him and his wife Sammy flew down there, and they are spending the weekend in D.C. seeing some sights as well as shooting a video uh, of the abilities of the Class B camper vans to maneuver throughout the city and things like that. Um, in Florida, uh, where my dad also has a uh, summer home, he's down there right now with my sister. Uh, he has a Pleasure Way Pursuit that they will be driving back. I also have another... I have an American Cruiser sitting down there, and I think that's the only two that he has down in Florida at the moment. Um, I have a 2009 Pleasure Way XL on the Ford chassis that my mom and her best friend uh, Becky are flying out to pick up here this coming week. Uh, they're flying out on Wednesday, should be back sometime Sunday. Um, and then I also have a 2013 Pleasure Way Lexor TS, which is on the Chevy chassis, uh, that I have to get picked up sometime here. Uh, this coming week, which will either be me, uh, Dad, or uh, Mary, who is our faithful um, retired driver. She drives all over the country for us, does our deliveries, as well as some of our pickups. If I called her right now and said, hey, Mary, I need you to go to Texas, um, she'd say, when? And I, if I said five minutes from now, she'd say, okay, I'll be there in about 10. And uh, she's very good. She's very reliable, but she does a lot of our driving around the country. So if you have had one delivered to you, uh, you may have met her. Again, if you have any questions, give us a call at Coon Truck and RV, the best little RV dealer around since 1976.